What would happen if someone organized all of Batman's villains into one master plan? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites for you to understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Before we go in, I want to state, this is for the most part, no longer in continuity. Characters mentioned in this story have been completely changed or moved around, and both Batman and Superman are their pre-New 52 counterparts. It is a good story nonetheless. But treat it standalone, please. Batman wasn't always Batman. He started his life as a young boy named Bruce Wayne. He had a wonderful childhood until the day that he lost his parents in a mugging down Crime Alley. That day, he made it his life's goal to prevent any more death, by any means that he could. The family butler Alfred tried his best to raise Bruce like he was his own son, but eventually, Bruce vanished. And he trained with the greatest minds in criminology, martial arts, and the craft of detecting only to return and try his best to clear out all crime in Gotham. But he quickly discovered that he needed to strike fear into the hearts of the villains, so he therefore set off as Batman. While this did aid him in preventing much of the crime in Gotham now, and he did have Alfred and his wards, he was lacking in one area of his life due to his choice profession. He was lacking in love. Our tale begins with Batman swinging onto the deck of a tanker. There's a young boy being held captive there, and he has two minutes to get in and get him out before the kidnapper returns and finds him. They've demanded one million dollars in cash, but Batman is here to ensure that they don't get it. The power is quickly cut to the tanker due to the FBI trying to make their own move, but Batman cuts through the guards and finds the location of the young boy. He blows out the door to the boy's cell, and the little one looks up at him. You're Batman! Yes. He tells him as he grabs him and they launch out of the holding cell. Everything is going according to plan, except that once Batman gets back to the deck of the ship, the kidnapper has caught up. Killer Croc comes running and swiping at Batman, holding the briefcase that contains the ransom. You shouldn't have come here! This doesn't involve you! But Batman dodges and moves faster than Croc. While he has strength and sheer power, Batman has his agility. I was off by 11 seconds, Batman thinks to himself as he ducks underneath Croc coming in for a bite and then he headbutts him before kicking him back. While the two of them are facing off, a grappling hook comes in out of nowhere and grabs the briefcase that contains the money. Batman quickly grabs a nearby chain from the boat, he wraps it around Croc's mouth and then he strings him up just before the FBI arrive. It's then that he notices the money is missing, so using his infrared goggles, he looks around and sees Catwoman fleeing the scene. Another bat rope goes off and he begins to chase Catwoman, shouting STOP! But this is a game that they've played many times before, and she looks back at him. What took you so long? This isn't like her, he thinks. She steals jewels, museum pieces, and things from private homes, but stealing someone else's take? That's not her style. Just like kidnapping isn't Croc style. Someone else is behind all of this. They race through the city, leaping over alleyways and streets filled with traffic, but she's always one step ahead of him. Like the view? It's the only thing that you're gonna catch tonight, she yells back, enjoying their little game. But Batman replies with, don't be so sure, just as someone cuts the bat rope. He begins to fall into the alleyway beneath them, and once Catwoman realizes that he isn't chasing her anymore, she looks back, asking, Batman? But he's busy, because there's nothing to grab onto, nothing to stop his fall, and no way to prevent what's about to happen. He falls headfirst into Crime Alley. Oracle comes over the comms quickly, Batman, are you okay? But he doesn't reply. She realizes that this is not good, as she can see heat signatures moving towards him, so she puts out an all points bulletin to the friends of the Bat family. And the woman that answers is the Huntress. She comes racing in on her motorcycle and she kicks the teeth out of the thugs that are there. She then uses her bow staff and slick moves as she quickly dispatches every random thug that tries to approach Batman. She then calls into Oracle. I'm done, everyone's down. So Oracle moves the Batmobile in, and Huntress loads him up as Oracle closes the doors and tells Huntress. I'm sure he'll want to thank you himself. But Huntress loads up onto her bike and tells Oracle, This is me holding my breath. High above everything, a man in a trench coat and bandaged face watches over the whole event. Meanwhile, Catwoman makes her way to Poison Ivy's garden high atop of one of Gotham's rooftops. She slowly walks in and hands her the money. That's it. Not a man or a woman can resist Poison Ivy. Ivy stands with a smile as she looks back at Catwoman. She then brings the money to her mysterious benefactor. 
Batman is brought back to the Batcave where Alfred realizes Batman has a fractured skull. Somehow, Bruce manages to tap his finger in Morse code and he tells Alfred the name, Thomas Elliot. The Bat family quickly stages a car crash and Bruce is admitted to the local hospital where the world famous surgeon Thomas Elliot arrives to perform brain surgery on our fallen knight. But the question is, who is Thomas Elliot? Well, Bruce had a life before his parents died and one of his friends, well, really his only friend, was Thomas Elliot. He was a young boy from the Elliot family and Bruce and him would spend hours playing games and messing with each other. Until one night, Thomas's parents were in a car crash and it was up to Bruce's father to save them. Bruce swore to Thomas that his father was the best and he could save both of Thomas's parents. But when he came back, he told them that he was only able to save Thomas's mother. He was furious with Bruce for lying to him and he punched him across the jaw. Back in the modern day, Bruce recovers from his head injury and within days of being released in the hospital, he's back on the trail of whatever was going on that night. His first stop is to go by Killer Croc's cell and see if he can get any information out of whoever hired him. But Croc says nothing and instead, he breaks the glass around his cell. He pushes Batman aside and he makes his way to the sewer exit yelling, I'm gonna get out of here and get my money. Luckily, when they brought him in, Batman had a homing device placed into his spine. So he takes off for the Batmobile to catch him, asking Oracle where the signal is moving to. But before Batman can converge on Croc's signal, someone shoots out the front left bat tire. The Batmobile spins out of control and flips over a building landing into an alleyway. He quickly knocks out the glass and looks around. This shouldn't have happened, he thinks to himself. Those tires are reinforced Kevlar and they're filled with petroleum jelly. You would have to know exactly where to blow one out to do so. Oracle begins to ask him if he's okay, but he tells her, whatever you do, don't lose Croc's signal. Croc, meanwhile, is scaling the building where Ivy's garden is located, and at the top, he finds Catwoman sneaking around looking for something. Hello, kitty. He steps in with the rain pouring around him. I want my money! And then he swipes at Catwoman, forcing her to fall back. It was Poison Ivy, Catwoman tries to tell him. Wrong answer. Poison Ivy contacted me in Arkham to tell me that you had it, and you'd be here tonight. He then grabs Catwoman, lifting her off the ground and licking the side of her head. Catwoman tries to defend herself. We've been set up. Ivy was supposed to meet me here and she used me to get that money. She then reels back, trying to get out of the range of Croc's mouth and screams, I don't have the money. So he tells her that there's no reason not to kill you. But Batman's hurt enough as he throws a bat rope around Croc's mouth again and then he launches a grappling hook into the nearby wall, throwing Croc out of the building. The only way out of this croc is to talk to me. Someone is playing all of us. You, me, Catwoman, and maybe even Ivy. You have to trust me, croc. So croc looks up at him. Look at me! Look at what I've become! The money was to fix me! But before Batman can get any more information out of him, the FBI arrives shooting at both Batman and Croc. Batman says under his breath, idiots, and he takes cover, but croc jumps up with their helicopter, only to find himself trapped in a net. As they leave with croc, Batman stares into the night wondering, who is behind all of this? Very few people have the power and knowledge to manipulate Croc, Ivy, and Catwoman. And while he's standing there thinking, the man in the trench coat and bandaged face is watching the whole thing from a distance. Six nights pass and Batman can't find any trace of Ivy nor can he find anything on Croc. He thinks to himself that he will find it eventually. But Catwoman then arrives and tells Batman, I found Ivy, she's in Metropolis, and I want to go there with you. He stands there silently. So she leans in, and she places her hands on his chest. Listen, you saved me. You have more than once throughout the years, and I don't think I've ever properly thanked you. But Batman stands his ground. Don't. So she leans in for the kiss. Aren't you curious at all? Batman grabs her by the shoulders and holds her close as they kiss by the moonlight. At long last, Batman feels the love that he's been missing in his life, and it's with the woman that he was probably always meant to be with. Catwoman pulls back, preparing to leave. Play your cards right and there will be more of that. But Batman grabs her shoulder. Hey now, I'm not one of your toy wonders. But he instead hands her a ring. Is this a promise ring or something? Press it when you find Ivy if you find her before me. I'll see you in Metropolis. The next day, Bruce Wayne flies into Metropolis. There isn't much use for Batman in that city, but Bruce Wayne owns the Daily Planet. Why can't he come by for a visit? At the airport, Thomas Elliot sees his old friend and he calls out to him. Bruce! 
and they share a car together while Thomas asks Bruce how he's holding up from the surgery. Bruce thanks him and tells him how grateful he really is for saving him, but Thomas tells him that he doesn't care about that. He wants to make sure that Bruce is taking care of himself. You aren't Superman, you know. He then gets off at the Daily Planet to say hello to his favorite reporter, Lois Lane, before heading off to see the current CEO of LexCorp, Talia Al Ghul. He asks her to find him whoever is dealing with a chemical known as ethylene, and she agrees, but she also comments on how different he seems, and she isn't sure she likes it. But their meeting is cut short by Catwoman buzzing his bat belt. She's found Ivy. Catwoman called Batman to the top of a moving train where she comments on the Chanel 5 odor that Batman has on him. I wanted you to know why I wanted to see Poison Ivy before you. She took control of my mind and made me do things that I may have been prone to, but it wasn't my decision to do those things for her. She violated me, and no one treats me like that, understood? Batman agrees with his silence because he doesn't know what to say or do. He kissed her. He kissed Catwoman. At her greenhouse, Catwoman tries to pretend that she's under Ivy's spell still, but Ivy doesn't fall for it and they begin to fight it out. Catwoman gains the upper hand only to have Ivy's vines wrap around her throat and begin to strangle her. Batman decides to step in at that moment with a batarang setting Catwoman free and Ivy sees him. You brought your champion, I see. Well, so did I. The entire building begins to lift off the ground and just before the entire thing is thrown into the harbor, Batman sees him. No, not here, not now, not him! As Batman runs over to check on Catwoman, Superman is floating overhead. What hit us, Catwoman asks, and Batman replies with, He did. Tell me you have a plan, she asks, worried. I know him, I do. I know what his next move will be, Batman thinks to himself. But he doesn't know what mine is. So Batman grabs Catwoman and leaps into the harbor, as Superman fires his heat vision, destroying everything around the area. Batman throws a mouthpiece onto both Catwoman and himself, but he sees her struggling. Cats and water don't mix, but she'll have to trust him. They make their way to the lead-lined sewers of Metropolis that LexCorp had installed, and they begin to run down them. We can't outrun him! He's faster than a... Well, you know, Catwoman says as they push themselves. But they aren't running. Batman stops right where he wants to, and he pulls out the kryptonite ring, and then he turns to Catwoman. You know your part. Grab any three of them. It'll be the gal, Catwoman tells him. I know his type, and it'll get the best reaction. She then jumps on him and kisses him. Why did you? Because later tonight, you might not be able to do that. And on that note, she turns to run as they hear somebody punching down the walls. That's my cue, Catwoman yells as she runs away. Crash! The wall behind Batman comes down as Superman has arrived. In response to his arrival, Batman uses everything he has to haymaker Superman with the ring. He then continues to lay it on thick. Over and over, he punches Superman in the head. Listen to me, I've opened the gas main, so if you create a spark with your heat vision, you'll destroy the entire block, and you know what building we're under. Then, before Superman can respond, Batman hits his hypersonics, forcing Superman back. And then Superman responds by freezing the gadget, and Batman blinds him with a flash grenade. He then launches a grappling hook at Superman. It's all about timing, he thinks to himself, and that's not easy with a man faster than a speeding, well, you know. Clark, about that gas main? I lied and Batman leaps out of the hole that Superman made, allowing him to punch the voltage box that Batman was blocking. As Batman gets his bearings on the street, Superman breaks through the ground. You hurt me. This ends now. And with that, Superman grabs a car. Batman stops him. Look up. You can save her or you can fight me. It's your choice, not Poison Ivy's. So Superman looks up to see the Daily Planet in front of him and Catwoman holding Lois Lane over the ledge. Then, Catwoman drops her. She screams and Superman is instantly back to his former self. He rockets in to catch her as he always does. With the whole ordeal behind them, Batman and Superman head to the rooftop of the Daily Planet for a talk. Ivy had help. I don't know who gave her the green K lipstick so that she could control you, but she didn't make that. We need to find her, Batman tells Soups, and Soups tells him, I don't think that either of us can find her in time, but I do know someone who can, and I need a new uniform for my fortress anyway. So they get the one superhero that Poison Ivy wasn't expecting, and they use Crypto, the super dog, to track her down. Catwoman ends up knocking out Poison Ivy, and Superman looks to her. Was that really necessary? But both Catwoman and Batman tell him, yes. Catwoman gets to watch the dog while Batman and Superman have a chat. Superman tells Batman that he made the right choice by giving him the ring, because he's always the detective, and you're ever the Boy Scout. They shake hands and they part ways, but during this entire little adventure in Metropolis, 
One individual with a trench coat and a bandaged face has been watching. This closes out Hush Part 1, and oh boy do we have a lot of questions. Who is the trench coat man? Who's pulling the strings of our villains? Who cut the bat rope and shot out the bat tires? Where is Croc and who supplied Poison Ivy with Kryptonite? The mystery is only going to get deeper, so please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get the next episode in this series and join us next time. While you're waiting for it, make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ComicStorian. And make sure you go to our Facebook at Eligible Monster. Click these videos for more great lore and stories, and we'll see you next time right here.